Hi there, it's me Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting and for today's video I want to show you a couple designs that you can do with the Border Buddy Ruler. The Border Buddy Ruler is a shape ruler. This one is a circle and it's got a couple different of the same shapes on the inside and then it's got a design on the outside. Now a lot of people are wondering what else can you do with this beside a string of pearls in a border or a sashing um, and I'm going to show you. So this ruler is made to come apart so that while you're at the machine you can leave your needle down and you can take this apart and select different size circles for whatever you need. Um, it also has some arch marked lines so that you can use it as a curved quilting ruler if you want to do some curved cross hatching um, or you can use it in borders and sashing. So you can use the big one of course if you need all the way around as an outer circle but these inner circles I like to use in borders and sashing. So borders and, and sashings are typically um, one inch, two inch, and three inch borders. So these are slightly smaller. These are scant sizes. So this is two and three quarter inches, three, three quarter of an inch, and one and three quarter inch. So it's under all of those sizes because as you know when we piece our quilt tops, at least when I piece my quilt tops, you've got you know, different parts that go in and come out and it's not exactly an inch everywhere, it's not exactly two inches everywhere. So if I had a one inch circle, that circle would pop out of the sashing. So I wanted to create something that would stay inside of the sashing to kind of give the illusion that the sashing is more square than it actually is. Um, so these are really great sizes to use for that and now I want to dig in and show you um, just a couple different things that you can do with the ruler and some free motion designs to get some cool modern contemporary type techniques went ahead and I just kind of stitched down in this purple color a three inch sashing that we're going to use um, for the pomegranate design that we're going to do. Now the pomegranate design looks a little bit like this. Okay, We're going to do halves on top and halves on bottom and we're going to do some free motion in between to kind of um, spice things up a bit. And you'll notice that actually right here, I did a design in the middle that matches the design on the inside and it, you kind of get lost a little bit in there, but on this other side, I did a different design behind and I like the way that that kind of complements because it's circular, but also contrasts because it's a different design um, in the middle. So I would recommend that whatever you put in the inside of your pomegranate, that you then do something different behind them. Now the goal for this is to start with half of a circle and we're going to start with half on our edge making sure that we leave space for our binding right so we're going to come in a quarter of an inch and we're going to start with a half circle until we reach an area where we need to stop and inside of where my binding is going to be I've got my foot all set up because this is a three inch sashing all right. I'm not going to use my two and three quarter inch circle to fill it as a circle because I'm doing half and half and I don't want them to touch. I want to leave a little bit of space in there. So I'm actually going to use my smaller one and three quarter inch, right? I've got double batting here so it's super fluffy on my left side here. When you hold the border buddy ruler for me, I like to make sure that I'm holding down um, two parts of the ruler at the same time. So you'll see that I'll kind of turn it around and change my hand placement because I like to make sure that I'm holding down at least one of each part. It makes me feel a little more secure when I do it. And so on all of your border buddy rulers, I'm not sure if you can see it here. Let's see if I turn off a light. Nope. It has 90 and 45 degree markings everywhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up those 90 degree markings. They're a little bit longer than the 45 degree markings. I'm gonna butt it up next to my foot because it's right where I want it to start my design. And so that 90 degree line is in line with my sashing or what would be your ditch if you're doing this on an actual quilt top. And then I'm going to hold this down and I like it like this and I'm going to come down into my sashing and I'm going to do half of a circle. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm gonna move this over and my ruler grip is catching on that, um, that batting there. I'm gonna line up my 90 degrees, okay? And I'm gonna stitch another half. We're just going to keep doing that until we do the whole side. Mm -hmm. 
This wouldn't be as hard if I was doing just a straight line sashing, but it's a little bit harder because I'm kind of melting it into another design. So you're kind of seeing a little more intricate planning happening here. All right, so we're going to line that up half and half. Make space for our... Binding. Just want to make sure I started in the right place. Line up our 90 and 90 and do half. Now, if you want to do this all in one fell swoop, you can do one, two, three, continue. And that, what I'm doing is I'm doing a design with contrasting thread on here. So I want to leave little to no leeway for, I guess, mistakes. It gives me a little bit bigger of a line to hit when I'm doing designs on the inside of that coming coming back. Now your goal would be to try to get these all to line up just right. So you want to make sure, like I didn't quite start in the right area. So you can kind of see how this is going. If I had drawn a line right here just to make sure I started at the same place, these would line up perfectly with one another and I know in the video there you can't see that mine aren't lined up perfectly but I just want to be honest okay so we'll line up that 90 and 90 Okay, that fit, sorry, that fit perfectly under my hexagon. I did not expect that to happen, but I took a chance. Okay, and then we'll just... All right, so I wanna stop at the top of my design. All right, so I've got all my arches in there. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back in and fill them. Go ahead and fill that in. So we're just gonna do some kind of, it's like a swag kind of design. And we're just going to bump in. It's okay if they're not perfect or if they don't match up. Now, if you want to keep going in the same direction, instead of going this way and that way and this way, you're going to end up with a lot of thread buildup on this line. So what you want to do is to create those swags coming back. Okay, and we're just going to fill that one in. And then you're going to do a fill to get yourself back into this next one. Okay, so I'm going to put my quilt glide on and I'm just going to go back and forward, slide over. I like it better if I don't actually touch any of my stitch lines. And then I'll stop, make sure my regulator's on. Bump. See how it kind of gives me a bigger place to stop with the three lines stitch? Turn on my glide. Turn on my regulator. And this is kind of my process. So I like to kind of lay the foundation, the skeleton, the bones with the half circles. And then I'll go in and I'll do a fill. want to create those swag designs it's okay if they're not beautiful especially if your thread matches you won't notice a whole lot of what's going on but 
For teaching's sake, read that contrast is better. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to repeat. going to go in if you want you could leave this just as it is you don't have to do any more work especially if your thread coordinates um, or you could use a bigger circle so they get closer and touch now you're going to go in and fill this area in so I'm going to do like a concentric circle type design you could do any kind of design you like I did try to draw pebbles on the other side of that and if you use something like pebbles it kind of you kind of lose this pomegranate style design so make sure to use something that complements but doesn't take away from your design if you can't do these contemporary circles. And the goal is just to kind of make them look like they're melting. And you can use that line to travel. I'm going a little slower than I normally would. Largely because there's a camera, but also because I'm using contrasting thread, so I want to be careful not to miss my lines. A little more careful not to miss my lines. Make sure when you get into spaces like this, you fill it in as if your design's melting and then make sure it complements on the other side. have to come in here but if you're kind of a little bit nerdy like me you're gonna want to do some kind of something to make it look like it coordinates all right and then I'm just gonna forward stitch back stitch take my needle out okay and then I'm gonna cut my threads and you can tell I have three threads attached to my quilt one moves and two do not going to cut the two that do not move because those are attached on the back side of my quilt. Then when I move my machine, you can see that that thread gets shorter and moves out of the way. So now you can see the whole design. 
So isn't that cool? So you're gonna do a three inch sashing, use your border buddy ruler, and you're gonna line up those 90 degree lines to make your halves. You do half on top, half on bottom, bump backs for your pomegranate, back and forth for a denser fill, and then something that contrasts and complements um, in the middle in between. All right, so border buddies are on boldnotionquilting.com. If you need one, they are under the products in the ruler section. Um, so thank you all for watching. I hope this helps you get some good ideas for um, some different circle ruler designs that you can do in sashing. So you can kind of liven up and, and switch up what you're doing. I know this is a little more contemporary probably than most other things um, that are out there, but I thought that this would be a really cute and fun design. Thank you all for watching. Please share and uh, give it a thumbs up. Take care and happy quilting.